begin with, we will start talking about the major arterial tributary through the axillary space. Not surprisingly, it's called the axillary artery. In setting this up, we're going to do a kinesthetic learning exercise. And to begin with, let's just put the full artery in place here. Now, notice that I've drawn the artery a lot longer than just the uh, axillary portion. This is because we will be continuing this artery further down when we talk about the arm, forearm, and hand. And uh, consequently, if you have a full body sketch, you might want to consider actually drawing it in on that and uh, being able to return to it and continue the drawing at a later time so you have a full picture of the vascular system for the upper limb. The region that we're particularly interested in is the axillary region today. And that's going to be uh, the portion of the artery that extends from the first rib down past the scapula. So even though it's called the axillary artery as compared to other branches, it's really getting a name change as we go further along the artery, kind of like uh, when you go from a uh, highway from one state into the other and you see a sign saying you're now entering the state. Nothing's actually happened to the road. The road's exactly the same, but uh, there is a uh, new demarcation point. The first boundary to be aware of is the boundary between the subclavian and the axillary artery. And that occurs just past the level of the first rib. So that everything proximal to this point is considered to be part of the subclavian artery. Everything distal to this point is considered to be part of the axillary artery. Now, before we look at the axillary artery itself, there are a couple of branches that we do want to discuss off the subclavian. Not something that we're really going to be able to see in lab this time unless you really dig deep. Uh, it will come up again during the head and neck unit, but we have touched on a couple of these arteries, so just to show where they're coming from. First one to mention is the vertebral artery, and this is actually the branch point at which it comes off. It's one of the first branches off the subclavian, and as we've previously discussed, it's going to run medially, and that's the one that's going to go through the frame and transversarium of cervical vertebrae C1 through C6 as it continues on its uh, way to the base of the occiput. So we've seen the distal segment of this artery, but this gives us an opportunity to draw in the proximal segment as well. The other artery to be aware of is what's called the thyrocervical trunk. So it itself is uh, not a full arterial branch. It's actually a trunk that gives off several sub-branches. We'll be discussing all of the different branches of the thyrocervical trunk that are associated with the cervical region in the head and neck portion of the class. But for the time being, we have touched upon one vessel that actually travels laterally travels posterior to the clavicle, and then travels just over the scapular notch to the suprascapular fossa. And this is our suprascapular artery. So this is where this arterial branch is coming from, and that's the one that travels with the suprascapular nerve. That now allows us to make our way into the axillary artery. So as already mentioned, the axillary artery begins at the distal portion of the first rib, which we've got drawn in here. And it's going to run and terminate just past the lateral border of the scapula. So between those two black lines, this entire region represents the axillary artery. So notice that we say it terminates, but really it just changes its name. It goes through a name change at this point to become the brachial artery, which we will be talking about next time. In the region of the axillary artery, remember this artery is going to run deep to the pectoralis minor muscle. So if we were to draw in the theoretical boundaries of pectoralis minor, this is what it's going to approximately look like. And that allows us actually to divide the axillary artery up into three segments. The first segment is the region between the first rib and the medial border of pectoralis minor. The second section of this artery would actually be lying deep to pectoralis minor. And then the third section is the one that travels lateral to the lateral border of pectoralis minor and continues down to the lateral border of the scapula. In part, we divide it up this way because each one of these segments has a corresponding number of branches. 
when we look at segment one, there's one branch coming off here, two branches that come off segment two, and three branches that come off segment three, which we'll now be identifying. First branch to identify is the superior thoracic artery. So this is the one that comes off of the first segment, very proximal in the first segment. And it is going to run, as the name implies, to supply blood to the cutaneous structures within the superior thoracic region. Second branch, we're now into section two, where we see two branches come off. And once again, we see another trunk, which gives off a number of sub-branches. So this is called the thoracochromial trunk. And the thoracochromial trunk actually gives off a total of four branches, which we can identify at this point. First, we have the acromial branch, which as implied is going to project laterally towards the acromion and supply blood within this region. Second branch is the pectoral, which is going to travel just inferior to the superior thoracic and supply blood to the pectoralis major and minor muscles. Third branch is the clavicular, which is going to hook back up and supply structures around the clavicle. And the fourth is the deltoidal. And so this will travel rather laterally to supply the deltoid muscle and other structures in this region. These four branches, I'm a big fan of mnemonics for remembering things. The best mnemonic that I've seen to describe these different branches is what we call the broken alphabet. So usually you have A, B, C, and D. But in this case, our B is slightly broken. So we take a little bit away, and we're left with P. So we have A, P, C, D, acromial, pectoral, clavicular, and deltoidal. Third branch, which is the second branch off of the second segment, is the lateral thoracic. As the name implies, relative to the superior thoracic, the lateral thoracic is going to continue down the lateral aspect of the thorax, very in close proximity to the long thoracic nerve that supplies serratus anterior. This now takes us into the third segment just past the pectoralis minor. And the first branch that we see here is the subscapular branch. Subscapular is actually going to give off two subbranches itself. First is what we call the scapular circumflex. Circumflex means wrapping around, and this will actually wrap backwards and go to the infraspinous fossa associated with the scapula. The remainder of the artery travels down posterior to the lateral thoracic to be the thoracodorsal. So this is going to supply blood to latissimus dorsi and is going to travel with the thoracodorsal nerve, which also supplies latissimus dorsi. Last two branches that come off the third segment both wrap their way around the humerus, one anterior and one posterior. So again, we have circumflex in their name. The anterior humeral circumflex usually comes out first, and that's just going to wrap around the surgical neck of the humerus, whereas the posterior humeral circumflex usually comes off a little bit further down, and that's going to travel behind the humerus, and usually it meets up in anastomosis, meaning that it uh, partially fuses with the anterior humeral circumflex. We call this a collateral circulation. Kind of the same idea when you're driving around, there's multiple streets that you can use to get to a certain destination, same sort of thing here, such that if one of those arteries were impinged, blood could still make it to the appropriate structures through the other artery.